So we're here in the Wallace Collection and with a rather special dagger that I'll let Dr. Capwell tell you all about. Yeah, this is kind of exciting because, you know, when you come to see Arms and Armour at the Wallace Collection, you come into uh, display galleries that haven't really changed very much at all since 1908. We're very much in that sense a museum of a museum and we don't get to do new displays very often. It's very hard to do new displays here because everything's so densely displayed, there's so much material that if you want to change one thing, you have to change five other things. To change those things, you need to change 20 other things, and pretty soon you're having to tear the whole gallery apart. And We've never been in a position to do that, although we're hopefully going to be starting a major gallery refurbishment here for Arms and Armour in the next few years. Uh, but this is an example of a case that might superficially look like it's been here since the Edwardian period, but it's less than a month old. Uh, we just had this new case uh, um, delivered. It uh, was paid for very kindly by the Goldsmiths Company of London, and it's, it's designed to give a, a new prominence in the display to one of the most important objects in the entire Wallace collection. Uh, this extraordinary imperial Mughal dagger made in the early 17th century, uh, almost certainly for the Mughal Emperor Jahangir. Um, it's about as expensive and ornate and uh, rich as arms and armor ever gets. Um, there is, this is really the richest Mughal imperial dagger in the world. Um, and uh, there's only one other uh, compar roughly comparable dagger that's in this class, uh, and that's in a private collection, collection in Kuwait. Um, and so this is a hugely, hugely important object historically, artistically, um, and, uh, and indeed certainly within the context of this collection. And I just felt that, you know, of the many great treasures and important objects that are that are you know, almost hiding in plain sight in some of our old displays. This one really demands prominence and prestige. And it, it's one of these objects that really deserves its own case of beautiful lighting and so forth, to be, to be treated, if you will, like a celebrity. Um, and uh, and that's, what, that's what we've done here. And this is also a way for me to say, look what happens when you take one of the many great objects in the Wallace Collection and, and give it uh, a method of display that is appropriate to its quality and status. So uh, that's another thing to come and see the next time you're, you're here visiting us. It's quite amazing, and even the, the scabbard fittings, it just... The, scabbard, the, the funny thing about the scabbard is that it's, uh, it's later and it, it doesn't it's not original to the, to the dagger. If you look at the scabbard by itself, Mm. On its own, it's a spectacular object, mm. beautiful enamel, gold, uh, you know, probably 17th century velvet there, very, very nice piece. The problem is that when you, when you, when you put it next to this dagger, it starts to look a bit pedestrian. It's a different style, isn't it? Mm. So it's, it's enamel, yeah. whereas the dagger is precious stones. It's all precious probably, stones. Yeah. All precious. It's gold with precious stones. There's, there's, no, there's no enamel no, on it no. at all. No enamel, no glass. So it's actually it's an entirely different style of decoration. And yeah. Like you say, yeah. it's a sort of different grade, really, isn't it? Totally different level. The original scabbard for the dagger would have had mounts that were decorated in the same style, sure. as, as you would expect. And this style of Indian dagger um, appears, I think, in about the 16th century, doesn't it? And it goes throughout the 16th and through to the yeah, 18th century. Yeah, uh, this, this particular style of dagger, uh, the, the hilt, is very, very um, uh, distinctively Indian. Mm. It, I think it's an interesting demonstration of the, the, the tendency of empires to absorb the cultures that they conquer and appropriate the cultures that they conquer. Mm -hmm. You know, like the Romans were famous for doing that. The Romans got male armor from people that they conquered. The Romans got their cavalry from people they conquered, you know. Um, and uh, the Mughals did that too. This style of hilt, which you can call a chalanum, mm -hmm. um, is, was originally uh, indigenous to India before the arrival of the Mughals. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a Hindu. It's a Hindu style that that you can find in in 15th and perhaps even 14th century Indian art. Um, but the Mughals 
absorb it. They take it on. They do their own thing with it, and it becomes one of the many things that's fashionable for mogul courtiers to wear. As well as bringing their sort of uh, their, their own uh, Islamic styles. That, uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. The decoration the of the the stones and everything is very, yeah. very much a you know Islamic or, or you know but that Iranian thing. That grip shape with the bulge with the bulge sort of in the middle is characteristic also of Tolwaz uh, and mm -hmm. it's very mm -hmm. much a, a mm -hmm. sort of indigenous Indian style isn't it? So yeah. it's and here you've got the pommel, very characteristic pommel with these wings. That's also kind of the same spirit of, of the hilt that grips and supports the hand and the mm. Tulwars, yes, Tulwars yeah. do that as well yeah. with a disc rather than, than yeah. arms but it's the same kind of idea. Same kind of theory isn't it? Yeah. Um, and, and the blade is absolutely beautiful. Is, is, mm -hmm. the, is the blade Woots? I can't quite see. On um, almost certain Certainly, mm. I can't definitively say so, but we're going to subject it to neutron diffraction analysis in a few weeks, and then we should be able to tell you not only whether it's Woots, but also whether it should have a pattern. Nice. Um, and if it does, will it be treated to bring that pattern out, or will it be left? Well, that's another question. <laughs> we're, st we're still wrestling with the issue of restoration of patterns on yeah. Blades of the Wilds collection. I'm all for it, if it can be done successfully mm. and safely. Mm. What I don't want to do is attempt it and then get a bad result and then have to polish the blade again, which is just essentially destructive. Yeah. I'd want to be pretty sure that we knew what we were getting into and that we were going to be able to pull it off safely. I think something that the viewers will be interested in, so that point is very much like a rundle dagger, that's a reinforced square section. It absolutely it? is. So it's a very serious stabbing blade, despite the fact that the hilt gives you the impression of a jewelry object. That the jewelry object doesn't have any significance any meaning without the, the, the lethality still being there. Yeah. You know, it, the, 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 the weapon is meaningless as a jewelry object if it isn't a weapon. Yeah. And it still has to have a proper blade. And you see that in, in, in Europe as well, you know, the incredibly elaborate solid gold and enameled rapier of the Emperor Maximilian II that we had here for our rapier exhibition in 2012 is exactly similar to this. It's like the, the European analog. It's got this incredibly delicate, super elaborate hilt, but then it's got it's got a an, uh, it's got an Antonio Piccinino blade on it, rapier blade. Mm. You know, one of the best Milanese rapier blades of the time, and you could you could still do what you need to do with it. Yeah, I mean, this is this is it's absolutely a, a functional blade. It's very clearly a very good quality yeah. blade, but yeah. there's there's nothing not functional about that. Right. And that right. reinforced point, of course, at the time, noble Indian. Uh, warriors would have gone into battle wearing armor, wearing full yep. armor with, with yep. a mixture of mail and plate and with a Kula Kud type helmet and so these are anti-armor weapons, you mm -hmm. know, just like rondel mm -hmm. daggers in medieval Europe. Right. Approaching right. through. That's fascinating. Thank you very much. Okay. And we'll see you next time. All right. Cheers.
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and feel free to follow us on Facebook.